In part 7 of this series, we dealt with the beginning of the Great Tribulation. This series has been important as we have been making sure that we are patiently preparing ourselves for the most important times in history. We are waiting for our Father to fulfill His promises, and we are the generation that will see all this come to pass, and so we must be ready. As we continue to prepare ourselves, there is a subject that is highly important that many of us sit and ponder on how it will be fulfilled. In part 4 of this series, I cover the prophecies that our Father has given us about the restoration of Israel, and how He will gather us out of all the countries He has driven Israel and Judah to, and bring us back to our land. When He does this gathering, many people have labeled this as the second exodus. The first exodus being when Yah showed His power in Egypt and freed Israel from their bondage there. This event, called the second exodus, is an important promise that we are waiting for, but for most of us, we don't know what it is that we're actually waiting for, exactly. Meaning, how will he do it? At what part of the tribulation period will this all occur in? Let me tell you now that I do not know and I do not have all the answers and I don't claim to. I don't think anyone can give a great deal of specifics, except that it will happen. And just like we celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread, for how fast it is that Yah can change our situation, we must always live in remembrance of that fact and be ready for him at all times. This subject is very important though, so it does need to be covered. Now praise him, he has not left us completely clueless about this prophecy as well. So in this part of the series, I'm going to dedicate to discussing the second exodus of Israel as Yahuwah gathers us back to him. Let's begin. Okay, so this next point is spoken of in two phases. There is the gathering, and then there is the fleeing into the wilderness. Now, as I explained with the witnesses, by the end of their time, I believe that the dry bones prophecy will have been fulfilled completely, and the children of Yasharel scattered all around the world will be truly awakened to who they are, and they will now believe in Messiah fully. And be clear, this is not all of Israel that will be waking up. The next part that needs to happen, I will believe will happen either during or after this point. I read through this thoroughly in part four, but to be clear and thorough, I will read this one again, just so anyone viewing for the first time can understand what I'm saying. This is spoken of multiple times by the prophets. For time's sake, I will read it from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 6. But now, thus says Yahuwah, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. For I am Yahuwah your Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored, and I have loved you. Therefore I will give men for you, and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you, I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Again, that's Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 6. You see, the scattered of Yasharel will begin to gather and come home, but they will not enter into the land yet, so prophecy can be fulfilled completely. He will gather them into the wilderness. Again, this is what we know as the second exodus. More on that soon. Let's read about it first, though. This is actually discussed in Revelation chapter 12. Now a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to Elohim and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by Elohim, that they should feed her there 1,260 days. That's Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. I skipped over verses 7 through 12, which goes over Satan being thrown out of heaven. And we will go on to verse 13. Now, when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, 
he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of Elohim and have the testimony of Yahusha, the Messiah. That's Revelation chapter 12, verses 13 through 17. Okay, so let's review this. This woman who bears the child is Yasharel, Israel. That's why she has the garland of 12 stars. 12 stars representing the 12 tribes. The male child that she gave birth to is, of course, Yahusha. That's why verse 5 says he is a male child who will rule all nations with the rod of iron. That's, of course, describing him. And later, Israel's child, Yahusha, was caught up to Elohim and his throne. The fiery red dragon is told to be Satan in verse 9. When Yasharel flees into the wilderness, she will be prepared there by Yah, and Yah will feed us for 1260 days. And so from this, I believe that both the gathering and the Revelation 12 sign we just read happening with Israel are congruent with each other. And it's possible that the great earthquake that happens after the witnesses leave contributes to Yasharel being able to come together in the gathering. I'm just speculating. I do not know for sure, obviously. Many people ask me, how is it that this will happen? Again, I do not know other than it will be through the power of Yahuwah and not our own. He said, this is how we're going to know him later on. If you remember the scriptures, it says, no longer will we know Yahuwah as the one who took his children out of Egypt, but as the one who took his children from scattered from all around the world. But again, I do not know. Like I said, I do not know other than it will be through the power of Yahuwah and not our own. The scripture says Yasharel was given two wings of a great eagle. This is obviously metaphorically. This whole chapter is given as a metaphor, so it's not really clear how this is all done. But what we do know is that the devil is not going to like it, and he's going to come against it. He's going to try to send a flood of some sorts to carry Yasharel away, but it's not going to work. We don't really know what it means when it says flood, except that we can assume it's some kind of attack. But it's not going to work, and from this he's going to persecute Yasharel's offsprings, which is the rest of the saints, the Kodashim, that are believers in Yah that did not come along with the gathering. Remember, he is persecuting those who keep Yah's commandments and believe in Yahusha. This is distinct. So those who say that they don't need to follow Yah's commands anymore, you should know the devil's not worried about you. I leave that to you to understand why, but I recommend that you go back to my Torah series and just understand the Torah. But for all true believers, do not fret over the beast and the troubles he will provoke against the saints. His time is short and either way you'll be blessed. Don't focus on the points that may want to bring you fear. For me, I just live in excitement and anticipation of the fulfillment of this all. So what we discussed, this point and period, is what is now commonly referred as the second exodus. And I just want to take some time to address this because those who are anxious for this often have questions. There's not much I can say about this moment except that it's important for you to wait on and trust Yahuwah. When this happens, it will not be by any of our power except His. Many of us who are now waking up and desire this point in time because we want to leave this God-forsaken land, we can often try to push our will, but we cannot do this. For me, I have prayed about this. After really waking up to this world and where we are, I thought clearly that I need to leave where I am now and be ready. But every time I've prayed about it, where I would go, there was no clear answer and direction, and he has never guided me like that. Anytime I knew it was him leading me, it was clear and unambiguous. The point I'm making is that, just like the first exodus, it was not by the power of Yasharel that they escaped Egypt, but it was by the power of Yahuwah. And the next time, it will be as such as well. So do not feel that you need to take matters into your own hands and force Bible prophecy. No, we need to be patient and wait on him. What we all must do right now, we should read the account of the exodus, the first exodus, and learn from the mistakes of Yasharel and be patient and faithful. Do not try to force his hand. Now, does that mean that if you are led to leave, that you should not leave? Absolutely not. How he has led me may not be the same for you. I know of others who have left and have been blessed and I respect it. If he has given you clear guidance, follow it. All I'm saying is that if you haven't been led and you don't know clearly what to do, there's a reason. It's because he has not shown us our path of exit yet. 
But listen to how he told us he would do it. In Isaiah chapter 43, read those verses again. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall flames scorch you. Do you see, he obviously has a plan for us. We just cannot see it in full. We can imagine, but we don't know. So we must be patient. But when he does show his power and gathers his scattered children, if you are his, you must be ready for him. And that's why it's important now to strengthen your faith and trust in him. Be ready for him, but do not force your own will. All of this will be by his power, not our own. The way we help is by trusting him. And when we do go into the second exodus, trusting him and being faithful to him is extremely important. As far as this event goes, though, we do know some other details. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 20. It says, As I live, says Yahweh Elohim, surely with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, and with fury poured out, I will rule over you. I will bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries where you are scattered with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the peoples, and there I will plead my case with you face to face. Just as I pleaded my case with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so I will plead my case with you, says Yahweh Elohim. I will make you pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. I will purge the rebels from among you and those who transgress against me. I will bring them out of the country where they dwell, but they shall not enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. As for you, O house of Israel, thus says Yahweh Elohim, go. Serve every one of you his idols and hereafter. If you will not obey me, but profane my holy name, no more with your gifts and your idols. For on my holy mountain, on the mountain height of Israel, says Yahweh Elohim, there all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, shall serve me. There I will accept them, and there I will require your offerings and the first fruit of your sacrifices, together with all your holy things. I will accept you as a sweet aroma when I bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will be hollowed in you before the Gentiles. Then you shall know that I am Yahweh when I bring you into the land of Israel, into the country for which I raise my hand in an oath to give to your fathers. And there you shall remember your ways and all your doings with which you were defiled, and you shall loathe yourselves in your own sight because of all the evils that you have committed. Then you shall know that I am Yahuwah when I have dealt with you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your corrupt doings, O house of Israel, says Yahuwah Elohim. That's Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 33 through 44. You see, this confirms what we read in Revelation chapter 12 about being taken out into the wilderness. Let's be clear that he is doing this and he is going to show great power. But when this happens, it will be done with his fury poured out. So there are going to be major problems in this world when he begins to fulfill this. Let me tell you the difference between those who will be ready and those who will miss this. The difference will be faith and understanding, but it also will be not following and listening to the media. I can imagine a bunch of falsehoods being given, a bunch of claims about climate change, maybe even aliens, a bunch of disputes about race and making it all about race, like many people still try to do today. Trust and believe the media is not going to report that this is Yahuwah fulfilling his promises. It's up to those who love him and know what he has said to be ready and to move in faith. And that will be us at odds against the rest of the world. So be trained up now to move against the grain. The media will definitely spin Yah's fury in terms of climate change or maybe something different, like I said about aliens or anything else. They spread lies and fear. But if you're focused on Yah, you will know and you will be ready. And he is going to bring us all into the wilderness and he said he's going to plead his case with us as he did with our forefathers. As I mentioned a little earlier, it's important that you go back and read through the scriptures and remember what Israel went through as we went through the exodus out of Egypt the first time. It's important that you get your faith and your trust in him together. Because when this all happens, we know that we must walk in complete faith and trust in him. It's possible we may be without a great deal of things that we were once used to, especially us that have been spoiled in Babylon here. Learn your lesson from early Israel and do not repeat those same mistakes. Remember, they were complaining about no water. They were complaining that they were tired of manna. They were just complaining and complaining. Make sure you trust him because what did he say he was going to do? In Ezekiel 20, what did he just say? In verse 38, he said, I will purge the rebels from among you 
and those who transgress against me. I will bring them out of the country where they dwell, but they shall not enter the land of Israel. So get that. Just because we all leave the places we were, that does not mean that we're all coming into the kingdom. He's going to purge out the rebels. I personally believe that this will include many of the Israelites with their uncircumcised hearts that have been speaking against the other nation's salvation. But that's my personal view. I do not know what these rebels will be judged by. But if it's anything like the first Exodus, definitely not having faith, not having trust in him will be a big problem. Especially because we have his word and we should know better by now. Either way, rebels will be purged out and they will not enter into the land. So it's important that you go back and read the account of Israel from Exodus through Deuteronomy and understand what Yah dealt with the first time and make sure that you do not repeat it. He wants his children to love him and trust him. So if you're a part of the Exodus, make sure you remember the account of what Yasharel went through and how they angered Yah by their lack of faith and make sure you don't bring that with you. Also, for the Gentiles, Though this is about Israel, please understand that if you're grafted in, you could be a part of this too. When Israel left Egypt, there was a mixed multitude that left with them. There were others from the other nations that came out with Israel as they were brought out of captivity. This can be the same for you if you are ready and you live in the truth. We know there will be many Gentiles that have rejected the truth and they will be tested. But understand this does not need to be you. If you're truly Yaz and you're ready for him, it does not need to be you. It is important that you do not look at this through the divisions of race, but just understand this is a covenant that Yah has made and he is keeping it. And you have a chance to be a part of it as well if you do not let Satan and his falsehoods keep you from it. I know it's easy to let your flesh in and all those other thoughts of provocation, but you need to understand truly what's going on here and you need to be ready as well. Either way, Yah is going to bring out his people from all the nations that he has scattered them and the world will know and the man of sin will come against us, but he will be unsuccessful. Now, let me just deal with that as well. There are a lot of people that say that the land that we know as Israel is not in fact Israel. A brother I deeply respect has taken a great deal of time to show what he has found in his research and is very compelling. I do not discount that the land that they show us on these maps can probably be a lie. I actually don't know and I don't disagree that it's possible that the land that they call Israel is not the land that is actually our promise. What I have to say about that is actually very simple. I'm going into this with one focus. I'm following Yah. I'm waiting on him and I will follow him wherever he leads us. And when he does this, I cannot wait to gain more understanding of the truths that were hidden by all these liars. So yes, I do not disagree that it's possible where we think we are heading is not actually the land that we're going because these people lie about everything. But in the end, I don't know. And all I do know is that I will follow Yahuwah wherever he leads us. This gathering is what I'm waiting for though. All these people waiting for a fake rapture and follow all this false doctrine where he has given so much evidence and so much clear prophecy on gathering us and what he would do and that he will do it. And this is what I'm staking my life to. All his promises. I trust and believe that he will not let go of his promises. So listen, I know that many of us are right now scattered and we're isolated. We don't have many people that we can fellowship with right now personally because we are all scattered around the world. For me, like I said, I'm waiting eagerly for this time and this is what my life is dedicated to. It's what I'm raising my sons for. I'm preparing them for the daughters of many of you who are coming. The second exodus is a remarkable time and it is something that we should await for. And also know, if you're still waiting for a significant other, you're waiting for your husband or your wife and you just don't know where they are, be patient because it could be that what Yah has for you happens during this period in time. This is not a time when the world is over. This is a time where we're blessed and we live in favor. So if you just focus on Yah and allow him to guide your steps and wait for him to give you everything that you need, you will be blessed. Don't force your hand though. You must have patience and trust in him to give you what you need if it's right for you. What our job and what our purpose is, is to live out our end and be who it is he actually desires when he brings us back unto him and when he pleads his case with us face to face. So if you're wise, you should now start adjusting your priorities to be ready for this and not focus so much on the things of this world. If your eyes are open, it should be clear now that the world is falling. And if you focus on Yah and live in truth, you have a future. The second exodus is a beautiful part of Bible prophecy. Please continue to focus on living in the truth and being what our father desires his children to be. 
and you will be ready. For all of Israel, whether you are a natural branch or a wild grafted in branch, the goal for those who love him is to be ready for him when he calls. So make sure you live your life waiting for him. And at that time, we will all be gathered unto him and we will dwell in righteousness together. Prepare yourself for the second exodus and be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share this video with others. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Y'all willing, I upload every Friday. Also, please don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. Please continue to pray for this ministry. Your prayers and support are sincerely appreciated. As always, I'd like to thank those who have donated to this ministry. Your contribution is a huge blessing to this ministry and helps me continue on with this assignment. Your support is a blessing. I'm always humbled by your support and I'm very thankful for you. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.